Hey everyone, Kevin here with Divinely Designed, and I have a soap making video. So this is going to be the first part of this soap making project. It's going to be a little bit of a longer project. Um, Brambleberry was super nice, and they sent me their sample uh, fragrance collection, uh, their sample fragrances for their um, gemstone collection. Uh, so that was super nice of them, and I'm going to use one of those fragrances in this cold process soap. And I've been meaning to try and do kind of this soap. It was in my head for a little while. Um, I'd like to try and do a soap that sort of looks like a, a turquoise stone. Um, now, the fragrance collection does include a turquoise fragrance oil, um, but it discolors. So I'm going to be using the Jade Fragrance Oil uh, for, this, for this project. And it's going to be a little bit of a long, this is not like a, you know, mass-produced soap or anything like that. This is going to be the first step, and then I'm going to do some other things later on. But the first step is going to be pretty easy. I just want to do a layered, a three-layered soap. Um, and I'm just doing different colors of blues. Now, I intend to cut this soap up later, so it doesn't even need to be super perfect, okay? Um, but I have three different blues I'm going to be using, all from Mad Oils. Uh, Key West Blue, uh, Tahitian Teal, and Peacock. Um, so this is a, you know, um, Key West is a just a beautiful, like, um, sapphire kind of blue. Tahitian teal is that just, just so beautiful teal. And then the peacock um, is kind of like this cross between, I don't know, blue and a little bit of green, um, and just has this beautiful iridescent quality to it. So those are the blues I'm going to be using. I also have some titanium dioxide that I have pre-mixed in a bottle, just in case I need to lighten any specific color up. Um, and I'll have the recipe down below. Uh, but I am going to add some uh, um, aloe vera liquid and some sodium lactate and a little bit of yogurt powder. Yogurt powder here is from the soap dish. Uh, I'm also going to add my fragrance here. Um, I'm going to add the majority of this bottle. And I'm going to mix everything up um, first. Um, I like yogurt powder, and I think it gives a nice silky feel to uh, the lather. Um, it also does help to produce a harder bar. Um, if you don't want to use sodium lactate, uh, the yogurt powder may be something you might want to look into. Okay, I didn't officially check my temperatures, but everything's room temperature. Nothing's really hot. Um, okay, I'm going to add my lye water. And if you're new to my channel, uh, you notice I have these, these sort of containers here that are a little bit unusual. I pre-measure my oils. I kind of master batch a big, big batch of uh, soap and then pre-measure it and put it into these containers, which are perfectly big enough to include my oils plus my lye water, and then that fit into this tall and skinny mold, which I'll be using. Um, it just makes making soap um, a lot easier um, for me. I, you know, I spend a couple, maybe a couple hours on a Sunday master batching um, a big batch of oils and then have everything ready to go when, I, when I'm actually going to soak then. Okay. Just getting everything mixed up here. That looks good. And then 
I'm going to split it into three in these containers. These are from Lowe's. Super cheap, nice size. Okay, that is the downside to uh, using that container. Is it's a weird shape and I usually spill some. I don't usually spill as much as I spilled uh, there, but... Um, now I normally mix my micas in oil beforehand, um, but I just didn't feel like doing it tonight. That's really the only reason. <laughs> I don't have a good reason other than um, I just didn't feel like it. And uh, this is a pretty slow moving recipe, so there's usually not a lot of danger that um, you know, things are going to be moving fast and I won't be able to get the colors done or anything like that, so. All right, let me actually start with the lightest one, which is Tahitian teal. I think that's much better for what I'm planning. So there's definitely, you know, you can still tell the difference between them, uh, but they're much lighter. Um, I think that's gonna work better. Okay, so right now, I think I'm just gonna start pouring the one layer. I need them to thicken up so that I can get this layered soap um, you know, so I can have some clean layers in it. Although not super important, but, um, so I'm just gonna start with um, the lightest one and pour a layer of that. Now I, I always have some extra soap left over, so I'm not gonna pour the whole thing. Plus my, um, what I'm gonna do later on, uh, I'm not gonna be, like if I fill this mold up, I'm not gonna be able to use all the soap. So I'm gonna pour some of this off here. And I think I'm gonna pour off probably about the same amount of um, each of the other colors. So this is like my bonus soap. <laughs> I'm gonna put that to the side. And then I am going to let these thicken up a little bit, which usually takes a good 15 or 20 minutes until I can get them to the point where they're sort of thick enough um, that I, I can keep this nice clean layer. Uh, this one is thickening up a little bit more, so this might not take so long, we'll see. But in the meantime, um, I have another portion that I need to do kind of in preparation. Um, so let me clean this up a little bit. Let me tidy up a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, so I also need some melt and pour. So I have just melted some uh, melt and pour into my little beaker here. And I am going to use this kind of in an unusual way. What I want is just kind of a thin sheet uh, that I'm going to cut up at a later point. So I have some Sister Golden Hair Surprise mica, which is my favorite gold mica from Mad Oils. And let me 
mix that together. That's nice. I think I am going to add a little bit of gold finger mica, which is a little bit darker. And I also think I'm going to add some of this uh, silver rainbow eco glitter that Brambleberry just sent me uh, just for the sparkle effect. So I'm not going to add a ton of this. A little goes a long way. And with all this mica, I don't, I actually don't know that, you know, you'll see any of that glitter. Maybe. And now that I say that, I think I'm actually going to add a little bit more. In the hopes that you do get a little bit of that sparkle. Okay, and I want to emphasize this is melt and pour. This is not cold process because I'm going to pour it on this little cookie sheet that I have lined with tin foil, and you wouldn't want to do that with cold process, right? So this is melt and pour. You can see sort of the color that's in there. And I just really want a, a thin sheet of it. So I'm just going to pour it on. And I don't want it super thin, really. I want it to have a little bit of width, so that I actually just may leave it just like that. I'll give it a little spritz here with some alcohol. Just to reduce, hopefully, the air bubbles. And then I'm just going to let it sit. Okay, so hopefully that's just going to give me kind of a sheet of um, gold melt and pour. This will all become clear later on, I promise. Okay, let's go back to our layers. That's firmed up pretty well. And this is thickened pretty well also. So I think that's good. Again, I, I don't need this to be perfect. Um... Okay, so this is just going to um, cure a little bit. I will probably put it in the fridge and um, and then after it's set, I'm going to unmold it and we'll do the next part of this project. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, here we are. Uh, this is the next day. Um, this is probably, oh, let's see, somewhere in the... Somewhere in the 18 hour range uh, that the soap has been sitting. So it's probably still a little soft, which is kind of what I want for this. Okay. Those layers came out great, actually. Um, this portion is probably going to be pretty messy. <laughs> so. All I want to do right now really is separate um, the colors. So I have a knife and I'm just going to take it and cut down the line. Now again, this doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. So I have my colors separated and now um, I'm just going to cut up uh, random chunks, sort of. Now, I want them to be, um, I, 
gosh, I want them to be not too big and not too small. <laughs> sort of a medium chunky size. Um, and then I have a plastic bag that each of the colors is going to go into. And this can be pretty random. Um, I'm going to cut this in half first, I think. And then I'm just gonna So it's fine to get some smaller pieces in there. Just get them to be different shapes. Now comes the really messy part. So I have some activated charcoal. And basically we're going to do a little light shake and bake. I don't know, am I, am I, uh, gosh, am I showing my age if I say that? Is shake and bake still around? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take some activated charcoal and put it in each of the bags. All right, I'm, I'm just closing it up, leaving a little air in there, and I'm probably gonna speed this up because then all I'm gonna do is roll this around, okay? Okay, so um, you want to be pretty vigorous when you do that. You want to end up with all of the individual pieces sort of coated with the fine coating of the activated charcoal. Now, that, so that soap was soft, so you know pieces were sort of sticking together. So hopefully if you're kind of vigorous with it, um, you'll, you'll get um, the majority of the pieces sort of broken up and then, um, you know, you won't have big clumps of them stuck together. And I'm just kind of shaking the, the loose charcoal powder to the bottom. Okay. Now, the reason I did them separately is I, because they're going to be covered in charcoal, I can't, I won't be able to tell what the colors are, right? And eventually, I want a mixture. I want to make sure that, you know, I don't have a big clump of one color all together. So I separated them in, uh, into di different bags so I know that each, one, each of these bags is one different color. Okay, now, more messiness. All right, I'm going to put the pieces into here. Now, there's probably extra charcoal powder, so I... I don't really want that, so I don't want to dump the whole bag. So I'm going to speed this up, but I'm going to try to be a little bit careful about getting the pieces out of the bag and into the bowl. So, have, you know, having done this now, I, I think I probably could have just done it in one bag. Um, I'm going to mix these up now, and um, gosh, they're, they're actually a little bit more delicate than you would imagine. You can pretty easily scrape off that charcoal, and we want it to be, um, you know, all, all covered here. Uh, and you may find some that aren't covered in the charcoal, which is a good opportunity to fix that. Um, all right, so I'm just going to mix these. Uh, 
This is a way messy project for me. <laughs> it's sometimes nice to get messy, I guess. But this is definitely a little out of my comfort zone. <laughs> all right. All I'm trying to do is, is mix up the colors, right? I don't necessarily want big chunks of any one color next to each other. Now, you're going to get some that are going to be next to each other, and that's totally okay. Um, you just want to try and avoid, you know, get some randomness in there, I suppose. Okay. So now, we have our gold sheet. If you remember, I pulled a port of Melt and Pour, and it came out great. It's nice and sparkly. And what I'm going to do is just cut it into um, random strips, really. Okay, so just cutting them into, I don't know, what's that? Two, two inch by three quarters of an inch, something in there. And they, it doesn't have to be perfect or uniform or anything like that. I mean, this is fine, okay, because it's going to be... Uh, random. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get this where it's not so super messy. I guess I should just really embrace the mess today. I just don't want to get activated charcoal everywhere. Okay, so this is the mold that I took my, you know, the soap out of. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is just kind of put this in here. I'm going to put kind of a random layer. Kind of tap it down so they kind of get snugged up to each other. But there's definitely going to be space in there. Okay, and then I'm just going to stick some of these gold pieces in here randomly. Just put them in there in between the, doesn't really matter which way they face. Just get them, you know, sort of dispersed throughout. Okay, now more of the little rocks. Okay, I'm going to I'm trying to get them a little bit more tightly packed. Okay. More ooh, sorry. More gold. Try not to have the gold um, up against the side completely. I guess it doesn't matter all that much, but I think it'll work better if it's not. Okay, more rocks.
Now, I very well may have um, leftover rocks here. Uh, which is why when I poured the initial amount in here, um, I, I left, you know, it was only about three quarters full. I think that feels good. I'm just going to press them down a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, make this a little bit firmer. Okay, um, so I have some leftovers. I'm gonna keep these, and I'm actually gonna put these um, in a little smaller um, individual molds, like into some, it's the Brambleberry uh, 12 cavity square mold probably is what I'll use. So I'm just gonna keep those for now. Okay, now I have some soap. This is the same, um, the same formula that I made the other soap with. Um, I already have sodium lactate and aloe vera liquid, um, my yogurt powder, and the mica Tahitian teal is already in here. Um, I just sort of mixed everything up. Okay. Now this is a smaller batch um, for the, the tall and skinny mold. I use about 1200 grams, which gives me extra. I always plan to have extra. Um, so this is 400 grams total. Uh, I'm gonna add my lye water here. This is gonna be, gosh, way, way more than I need probably. But again, not ever having done this, it was sort of a guess. So now, I bet you can guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my mold and I'm going to pour in. Now I obviously want this to be very thin. Alright, so now some of this is sticking up above the top here. And I think that's going to be okay. Because um, I can always clean that up a little bit. This, I actually, if I, if I did this again, I think I might increase that by, I don't know, 50 grams or so. I probably could use a little bit more liquid here. Liquid soap. So, okay. That's... It. That's the second sort of step, um, and uh, after the break should be the unmolding of this, okay? So stay tuned. Okay, everyone, here we go with the cutting of the turquoise soap. Um, I have a feeling that uh, this isn't going to work out quite as well as I hoped, I, the more I thought about it, um, I should not have had that much liquid to put in here. Uh, I have a feeling that means there's really big spaces. Uh, I probably should have squished it together a little bit more. But, we'll see. Actually, that's not terrible. Um, I like the little gold. I wish it were a little thinner, like these down here. These got a lot thicker. But in general, that's not too bad. I wish they were closer together. Um, so some of the others, the, the leftovers, I sort of squished into just a shape and let them dry and then, um, and then get, wash them to sort of take the majority of the charcoal off, off the top. 
So that's what that was left over. And that looks great. Like, I love those. They, they kind of look like turquoise. Um, and I want to say that this, you know, there is another soaper out there. Her name is Vicki Frost. And she, and I believe that's the name of her channel on YouTube. And she did this. That's what she did. She sort of squished them into a mold um, and then washed them off. So I am, I am not the creator of this, this method. And, and as far as I know, um, Vicky is, I, I don't know if anybody else has ever done it, but that, that look where you get these really fine black lines and you get, you know, the sort of different shades of the turquoise, um, that looks really cool to me. I think that looks really like turquoise. Um, and I, I got this idea after um, playing with polymer clay, actually, and making some turquoise from polymer clay. Um, and then I went online and looked to see if anybody had done a turquoise soap. Uh, and that's when I found Vicki Frost's uh, video. Um, that's pretty cool. See, now this is better. Um, where they got closer together here. Uh, I was hoping, you know, by pouring this other soap in here, like I'd get like this, where you get like these tiny little gaps that got filled up by the liquid and you got another um, color of blue in here that also looked like it was sort of surrounded by that charcoal-y bit. Um, but when you have like bigger spaces like in this one, it, it doesn't quite have the same effect. Um, but, you know, again, this for the first attempt, this is not bad. And I bet you after I let these sit and then I clean them up a little bit, uh, they'll probably look even a little bit better. Yeah, see, this one has a lot of space in between it. This one, not so much. That's not bad. But I still wish... Um, they, they look very separate here. Like, these look very, like, you know, geometric, and I, they should be more squished together and have a more natural shape to them. So, I, I don't know, I may try this again, um, to do another version. I mean, I'm not, I'm not unhappy here. This is a pretty, pretty good attempt for the first try, uh, but, uh, I, I wish it had more of that, um, I wish it had more of this kind of look, where you get that, um, more natural and kind of irregular shapes here, so. Okay, that was, I know this is a long video, so if you watched, uh, thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I haven't made cold process in a while, so I hope you guys enjoy this, uh, cold process video, and, uh, if you aren't, uh, if you would like this video, that would be fantastic. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, click on that subscribe button. And if you have any comments or questions about soap, um, leave them below. Um, if you are one of my viewers uh, who has been a longtime viewer and who've never said hi, I want you to take this opportunity to say hi um, and introduce yourself. Uh, I know I have several long-time people who've been with my channel for a very long time, uh, and I always enjoy hearing from them, and they comment a lot. That's great. Uh, but I know there are people out there, new people, um, or people who have watched my channel for a while and uh, have never commented. So if you've never commented, leave a comment down below. Um, and uh, that's it. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Have a great weekend, and uh, I'll check back here for more crafty videos. Bye.